Alrighty guys and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at the nurse and why I put her in the top spot in Dead by Daylight. Out of all the killers in Dead by Daylight, the 17, I put her in first place being the number one killer in DBD. Now recently she did receive a rework which made her movement speed still 96.25% by default. There is an add-on that will allow her to change that to approximately 105 but she will have one blink. However, we're not here to talk about that right now. We're here to talk about the nurse's basic kit and her changes. Recently she could have up to five blinks. Now she can have a maximum of three blinks, including a pink add-on. The pink add-on allows her not to blink through obstacles, though, so she has to blink around, which is good to know. If she is multiple blinking, then you will be able to know why, and a good outplay to her will be line of sight, much like before. Now, Whenever the nurse blinks and releases the blink, she will go on a fatigue cooldown. Once the fatigue cooldown has ended, it'll take three seconds for her to build her blink up by default again, allowing her to blink twice. However, she will always be able to blink once. Keeping this in mind, she'll be able to blink, blink, Fatigue, blink, fatigue, blink, fatigue, if she chooses. She'll always have one blink there available for her. Now, there are certain add-ons that cap her out at having one blink, much as one like here. This will increase your blink. There are certain things that do certain effects, but we're not going to be talking about that right now. So, to give you kind of some perspective, the hillbilly moves at... 230% when he releases his chainsaw, okay? So he's running in a straight line at 230%. While the nurse has let go of her blink after she's charged it, her travel distance and speed, her travel distance is 13.3 meters per second as opposed to her actual movement speed while releasing it is 333%. So the billy's moving at 233, the nurse is moving at 333. So the nurse is moving at 103% quicker than the billy. However, the billy can go around inevitably and doesn't have to stop as opposed to the nurse can only travel X amount of meters based off depending on her add-ons. If she's running extra range, it takes longer to charge. But the default kit is 13.3 meters per second with the charge. Now, I put her in first place as the uh, best killer in the game because she could still do everything she could do before. It just means you can't be too generous with your blinks. You can't go blink, blink, miss, and then blink, blink straight away. You have to go blink, oh, he's out of range, oh, wait, fatigue, blink, blink, hit those kind of plays. It just makes you be a little more precise with your blink uh, accuracy rather than just going for mass blinks around the board, even though you'll still probably do that. Now, this is my build. This is my personal build that I have not changed in quite a bit of time. I find it god tier on the nurse before the rework, and I still find it god tier after the rework. All right, you'll instantly notice there's no ruin. There's no totem. There's no nothing. I put this as the best killer in the game. I highly doubt or don't think she needs ruin. She has 100% outplay potential. She can blink through every form of defense for a survivor has. Their best play is Iron Will, Line of Sight. You can blink right through it, providing you're not running this out on right here. I have Infectious Fright. Infectious Fright allows me to down a survivor. Once a survivor is downed, every survivor within my heartbeat, which is 32 meters, will scream, revealing their location for six seconds. Now remember, when I charge a blink, it'll charge at 13.3 seconds. Uh, sorry, 13.3 meters a second. I can charge that twice and release. I can go about 26 meters. Now, knowing I can go so far in the one blink, it's going to mean I'm going to get very close to where that bubble was after I just downed a guy, especially if I downed him from an M1, not a blink M1, so there's less fatigue time. Every additional blink you do is longer on your cooldown in terms of how long you're spent looking at the ground, the look of shame, as we call it. Or you can go blink, blink, and hit, and because you hit somebody, the fatigue time's even longer. If you go blink, blink, and miss, that is a second longer fatigue time you can possibly have providing you're obviously not running extra blinks now the ratios have slightly changed on those it used to be 0 0.05 seconds added for every uh blink but i'm not sure what it is right now and that information isn't on the wiki so it'll be something i needed to test out so that's why i run infectious fright so the long story behind that is i just down jeff i see megan and i see nia scream i pick jeff up it's that simple i hook jeff for a pop stack and i look for the one person who didn't scream on barbecue and chili and i go over there and kick the jetty with pop goes weasel now every single player has been accounted for and no generators are completed. Alternatively, I just down Jeff, Nia screams, and there is no one else around. Nia is within 20 meters. I blink to Nia and I get a free hit on Nia. She takes good pathing, I go back to Jeff. She takes bad pathing into the open, I down Nia as well. Depending if I down Nia on my first attempt, I pick Nia up, I hook Nia. I don't down on my first attempt, I, I blink, I fail, I blink, I fail, I blink, I get her. I blink back to Jeff, I pick Jeff up and I hook Jeff. If I didn't fail on blinking hits on 
Nia, I pick Nia off. I hook. I look for a pop goes the weasel. Does it look urgent? No. Are they stacked on discordance? I go straight over, get a pop kick, get try and get a free hit, blink back, hook Jeff right back for a double pop kick. Do you see how the play would change based on what happens and what information is provided? Now we're talking about the whole build coming together here, right? The next perk, Pop Goes the Weasel. It's going to allow me solid, stable regression, which is um, a necessity, especially if you're not running Ruin. So I normally have Infectious Fright and Pop guaranteed. Now, normally with Pop, I always recommend Thrilling Tremor. If you look at my spirit build, which we'll be talking about in the spirit video, I go Horn of Ground, Pop, Devour Hope, Thrilling Tremor. Thrilling Tremor is really good with pop as it allows you to stall the game for an additional 16 seconds if people aren't on gens and it's not, you can't hide from Thrilling Tremor. You know, you get off the Jenny and then the Jenny seals. You can't work on it for 16 seconds. I'm fine with that. That's you wasted one fourth of a minute, more than one fourth of a minute. And I have more time to go around the board and do other things. So it's very, very good. If I was running Ruin, I would consider running Thrill, but you want to know something? I think Barbecue's king on the nurse, especially considering she can blink through every object in the game. You know, if you see somebody on Barbecue as nurse, you can double blink towards them, turn your camera to the left, and then walk, walk, sidestep, M1 them. They run it away, blink, and M1 them again, as if you had saved the best for last. It could be disgustingly strong. So you've obviously got Barbecue for mass situational awareness. Uh, people that hide from Barbecue or people that get within Barbecue distance, it won't bother me. I have Discordance. Discordance is what's going to be kingpin here, right? I'm going to be able to down people and know where to go. If I down Jeff while that Jenny's been discordancing for 8 seconds, I'm going to slug Jeff and go straight for the Jenny. If I down Jeff and then all of a sudden that Jenny becomes discordance, I'm going to pick Jeff up, hook Jeff, and go over there for pop. If that Jenny's in the corner of the map 50 meters away on a platform, I'm going to let the Jenny go. I'm not even going to worry about taking that out of my rotation unless there's 3 Jennies around there. If there's 1, I'll let it go. If, it's, if there's 2, I might let it go based on how many pallets on the other side of the map have been used. I might let both the Jennies go. Alternatively, I will beeline over there based on a lot of diff different information. Uh, is Jeff on the hook? David on the ground? Then Discordance activates. I now know where every single player is. I'm going to blink into the opening, or even as any killer, I'm going to move into an opening field of view. That way no one can creep past me. I'm going to walk in one direction where my field of view is blocked, wait two seconds, then walk back to see if somebody was waiting, watching me in third person, and then go straight for that one if they were. If they weren't, straight for the, uh, the generator. So you see how the different plays come into effect there. Having this kind of build allows me to go from many different situations, right? One on the hook, one on the ground, discordance. That's the ideal play. Alternatively, uh, one on the hook, or even one on the ground, Infectious Fright, multiple targets. I don't really need Pop Goes the Weasel right now. Do you know, like, there's different ways to get value and information from running this build. Now, there are other builds you can run on the Nurse. This is what I highly recommend at rank 1 or in the red ranks if you think you're, you're very good at Nurse or you want to get better at her. I'm going to leave on... Uh, barbecue and chili because I know this is a very powerful build. I'm going to show you my second favorite build right now. Now, there's a couple of different ways to build this. Now, personally, I prefer Devour Hope over Make Your Choice and my final perks, Agitation. Now, a lot of people would look at this and go, wow, Agitation, why would you bother running that goose, blah, blah, blah. So, the nurse moves at 96.25% movement speed. If you're unaware, every killer moves at 96% movement speed while carrying a survivor. The trapper not a default 115 movement speed, will now move at 96% movement speed while traveling with a survivor. This enhances it by 18%. That's going to put you up at 108%, 108.25 or something percent movement speed while you're carrying a survivor. Now, knowing this kind of thing, this means I'm going to, you know, be carrying Jeff to the hook. I'm going to get the hook sooner rather than later. So I'm going to get value out of Pop Goes the Weasel. I'm going to get value out of Barbecue. And I'm going to be able to rotate throughout the board. I love this build. I have a lethal on hand as well. Alternatively, if I thought Horner Ground would be better because I'm losing Devour Hope every game, I could just put in Horner Ground over Devour Hope. If I wanted both, I could just put on Horner Ground over uh, Agitation. There's a lot of different ways to build this. Now, a really powerful perk. I've pointed this out a few times in this series, and I'm going to point it out again because I don't think enough people appreciate how freaking strong this bloody perk is. This is one of the strongest perks in the game that people don't use, right? People only read the bad half of it. I'm all about preserving gens and keeping the game in terms of not getting gen rush because it's very easy to gen rush as a survivor. This here is going to be so devastating. When a survivor finishes a generator, Every survivor's aura, not aura, but there's a little bubble that appears above their head, much like madness or infectious fright. That's going to tell me where everyone is. 
regardless. The only counter will be being in a locker. And what are the chances you're in a locker while a generator is being completed? Unless I'm carrying somebody on my shoulder for barbecue and chili. You're going to be on the generator completing. You're going to be running. You're going to be searching a chest. You're going to be doing something. So if I have Jeff on the hook, David on the ground, and then Rancor activates because somebody just finished a Jenny, I'm going to go for the closest target. It's just going to give me mass situational awareness throughout the entire board. There is no counterplay to it. And for whatever reason, if they get the end game open, you can mori them. You shouldn't be looking at that part. You should be looking at the first half. At the same time, I'm highly against Bitter Murmur and generally Tinkerer. You should not look for a perk that's going to give you a reward when ge generators are completed. I know Tinkerer gives you a buff when Jennies aren't completed, but still being said, it's getting a bit close to your liking. I like prolonging the game in terms of allowing everyone to get more blood points, everyone to have a better time, long games, more blood points. Generally, everybody walks away with a smile on their dog. You could put that in there, right? I'm not going to recommend it, though. In my personal build, I feel that running Discordance and Barbecue gives me enough information. I don't need any more. The reason I'm running two information perks at all times on my main build is because I don't want any downtime. I want to know where I'm going, when I'm going. Much like my Huntress. My Huntress, I recommend Discordance, Pop, Thrill and Ruin. I got Thrill for Situational Awareness. I got Discordance for Situational Awareness. I do not want to be running at 110% movement speed through the Temple of Purgation or Purgatory and freaking running around the entire board trying to find somebody on Whispers. I want to know there are multiple targets here. I want to be able to go for where my highest chance is to find at least a player. It makes a lot of sense in my opinion. Right, there is another build I'm going to be showing you guys. Now the thing is, Iron Maiden's very powerful in the nurse, but there's one perk I haven't pointed out, because a lot of people get lockers to hide from barbecue and chili, and Iron Maiden, you know, you're going to be able to outplay it. There's one perk here that came in with Ghostface, which is God Tier. You heard me, it's God Tier. It is by far S plus S, 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 S on a nurse. Now, you might be wondering why I'm not running it. It's because I'm not running Ruin. If I chose to run Ruin on my nurse, I'd put it in Wake of There. Alternatively, there's one option I'd change this perk out for, and that would be Make Your Choice. I'd either run I'm All Ears or Make Your Choice. Now, I personally think I'm All Ears is better. Now, yes, Make Your Choice is going to allow me to down the hook savior, but this means I'm coming back to the hook. This means I'm coming back rather than committing to a chase after Jeff, who I just pop goes the weasel on. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like I'm losing a bit of value out of Make Your Choice. This here, when a survivor fast vaults a window within, or a pallet or whatever, within 48 meters, for six seconds, they glow pink as if they had object of obsession. I see them, but they don't see me. That is freaking huge, right? Survivors looping you at a jungle gym and you know you made a bad blink. Remember, when you fatigue, you're guaranteed to have a blink back. Then it takes three seconds to get your second blink. Now you still have three fucking seconds for you to blink, blink, and hit the guy. Like, you got a lot of time. Nine out of ten times, he's just going to block your line of sight and wait on the corner. You're going to be able to tap your blink and M1 him through the wall. They do not know you have I'm all ears. They don't know. It's not like Thanophobia where they get a debuff in the bottom right hand corner. That there is a hidden gem and a hidden weapon. And my personal opinion, one of the best perks you could possibly have on Nurse. The ability to just be able to, you know, know that information during a jungle gym. Even on, imagine a map where you really struggle. Something with a lot of freaking windows. Lyra's Institute. A lot of doorways, a lot of windows. Imagine how much that's going to help you. You know, you're going to see the guy life through the window and up the staircase. So you can just blink up and hit him straight away. Information from that is highly, highly recommended. Because keep in mind, it's over pallets as well. It's a rushed action. They rush out of a locker for whatever reason. They panicked. You know, they went to dead, uh, dead on you. Or dead, sorry, head on you. And then they ran around the corner, and you're just going to be able to react and hit him. It's very, very powerful, and a lot of people undermined the sheer pressure this perk runs out. I personally think that is one of the best nurse perks. I have experimented with it, and I have ran it myself. I love it. It also works in the upside-down world if you're unaware uh, when it comes to the Demogorgon. Not that you're going to be able to get a lot of value out of it. The reason you get a lot of value out of the nurse is because she can blink through the objects to just M1 them on the opposite side of the window. However, it does not work on the spirit while phasing, much like Nurse's Calling does not. However, Spies from the Shadows does. Because Spies from the Shadows isn't an aura reading an ability. It's an effect that happens when a crow flies away from a survivor moving past. That is the difference between the both. Much like Rancor is an aura reading ability that wouldn't work while phasing. 
All right, that's going to be all. I also like to mention Hex Third Seal. I think that's very powerful also to run on Nurse uh, if you're looking for a slugging build. I personally don't like a slugging build on my Nurse. If I do make a slug, it's generally because Infectious Fright kind of gave me that information. But even though I love I am uh, all ears, I personally cannot make room for it. You could go for something like uh, Surge. There is a very powerful build going around right now. I refer to it as the Freddy Krueger build, and I'll quickly show you what that is. It could be absolutely lethal on the nurse, especially because of how far you can blink now. So the perk build here is uh, Surveillance as your counterpart. So I'm just going to quickly try and uh, find Surveillance here real quick, guys, so just bear with me. Uh, surveillance. There she is right there. Now, because I'm running Surge and Surveillance, I instantly trade out Barbecue and Chili. I could put on Thrilling Tremor if I wanted to. That's going to help me out in terms of all Jennies are going to be glowing white. You could put on Ruin. I don't think you really need Ruin if I'm going to be telling you the truth. You definitely do not need Barbecue and Chili. This is about having the information throughout the entire board. So I'm going to put on Thrilling Tremor. Discordance is an option too. So basically, when I down a Survivor and I pick them up, Surge will activate on an M1 downing a survivor. If you blink an M1, you're still M1ing downing a survivor, okay? Survivor falls to the ground. Every generator within 32 meters around you will now explode. They will now be glowing white forever. The only time they change color is when a survivor starts working on them. If a survivor taps it and runs away, it, it's the exact same thing. So this means right now that I just downed Jeff. Nobody screamed on Infectious. I could substitute out Pop Goes the Weasel or even Thrilling Tremor for Infectious. It would work just as well. But the thing here is Surge is going to be very, very powerful. I just downed Jeff in the middle of uh, Auto Haven Wreck is uh, the gas station. Now the gas station is regressing. The Jenny to the left and the Jenny on the opposite side of the hill are all regressing, right? I picked Jeff up and I'm looking around on Thrilling Tremor. Every freaking generator is now white. All of a sudden, one generator starts glowing yellow. I hook Jeff, I blink straight for the one yellow uh, generator and I go for a Pop Goes the Weasel Kick. There is no Ruin in the build, you're correct. Alternatively, I could easily slide out Pop Goes the Weasel for Ruin. I could slide out Thrill for Ruin. I could slide both of these out for Ruin and Infectious Fright. Very powerful, very devastating. A lot of people undermine how strong it can be, especially on the nurse, because you can blink through walls. You don't have to go around. I am in love with Surge and Surveillance on Michael Myers. I'm in love with it on Ghostface. It can work on the pig, but I personally wouldn't run it on her. Um, and I'm because she doesn't have an instant ninja. I mean, the other two do have an instant ninja. Freddy doesn't. I know, but Freddy can teleport to a Jenny. Freddy knows somebody's on that. He can bait it out with a teleport into it and then leave and go in a different direction. But he has different counterplays. What does the pig have? The pig doesn't have much. I'd much rather discord and save the best for last. Um, if I wanted enduring, you know, that kind of build. Ruin, pop on pig. Something along those lines. Something that'll help me speed up the game in terms of M1s rather than you know, crouching and hoping to get around a corner and M1ing a guy that doesn't have good situational awareness or hoping he's on a Jenny that blocks his line of sight. So Surge and Surveillance is a god-tier combo on a lot of killers, right? Works hand in hand. So to recap on the Nurse, guys, right? So her add-ons have been changed. I haven't gone through them today. For example, the this used to increase her blink range. Now it considerably reduces uh, extra fatigue time from the chain blinks. So there's a lot of different things that have happened right now. Um, I'm not going to waste a lot of time going into them. The only really important ones you need to know is for a nurse to charge a blink to go further, she needs to charge longer if she has those add-ons. So you have to worry about a four blink nurse that can blink 29, 30 meters in, you know, oh, sorry, a three blink nurse that can blink uh, 29, 30 meters because she has double green add-on. You don't have to worry about that anymore. That is a thing of the past. Um, so all in all, guys, that's going to be all for the nurse today. Personally, I love the nurse on every map. If I knew I was going to a bad map, I would run I'm All Ears with uh, Ruin pop and barbecue if i thought i was going to a good map depending on how good it is i'm saying uh, let's go to the game for example i would highly recommend surge and surveillance on the game it's very very good even um i'm all ears could be a slide in there as well if i knew i was going to if i didn't know what map i was going to i would run my default build which is infectious fright pop goes the weasel thrilling tremor and uh discordance Alrighty guys, that's going to be all for the nurse. If you want to learn anything about the nurse or any of the other killers and why I put them in what tier I did, nurse being first place here, guys, don't hesitate to pop over to live streams and check them on out. It's a pleasure to have you here, and I will see you guys in the next video.